All right, folks, I've been testing the Viking sword that Dark Sword Armory has sent me, and I've got a lot of footage that is hard to cram into just a review video. Also, I'm not quite sure yet if I want to do some more tests, so I figured I should just put what I have so far in a separate video. First, a tatami cutting. This has not gone well so far. I'm assuming it's because of the edge, because it's not terribly sharp, which I don't really see as a problem for a viking sword, because this kind of blade generally does a lot better against harder, heavier targets, you know, like bone and shields, helmets, mail, things like that. And for that, you don't really want the finest possible edge. But for tatami, not so good. Now, generally, when I don't cut well, I prefer to blame myself before the sword, because you can always have an off day or something may be wrong with the technique, etc. However, looking back at some older footage, I've definitely cut pretty well with other Viking swords, despite my form actually being worse at the time. So this case to me really seems like a sharpness issue, at least when cutting tatami mats. You'll see later that it does just fine against another target. Anyway, moving on to the other tests. For this one, I wanted to be extra thorough when testing the construction and durability, because I've had some issues with another sword from Dark Sword Armory, the Sword of Fanor, and also one of their blunt practice long swords for Hemus Barring. There I was in the awkward situation of recommending it in the review and then later finding out that the guard loosened up and the grip actually split open and fell off. Anyway, so I was working my way up here. This is a relatively thick piece of wood, but it's free hanging and has a lot of give, so it's not that hard on the blade. And of course, as I said, a Viking sword would definitely have to be expected to be able to hack into shields and survive impact with mail and helmets and all of that. So it's reasonable to expect them to be pretty tough. But at this point, I wasn't striking terribly hard. As I said, I want to work my way up. And of course, in general, if you own a sword, I do not recommend you use it to chop wood. This is really just for testing to make sure that the construction is sound and nothing works itself loose, you know, that the, the guard stays in place, things like that. And also, if there is any damage to the edge, etc. Here again, very light cuts against a flexible target, nothing too hard. But still enough to notice flaws in the construction. This is where poorly fitted guards tend to work themselves loose. Here I'm testing the point to see if it bends or otherwise gets damaged. Prying like this, once again, I do not recommend at all. This is just for testing. So this, you can definitely consider this fairly abusive. And then some harder chops into a static target. This is definitely harder on the blade. And nothing happened here. So I checked frequently if the blade was still straight, and it was. Also no edge damage noticeable. So yeah, so far doing really well. Okay, I know, I know, the head is already completely wrecked. But these are expensive, so I gotta try to get as much out of one as, as I can. So I'm gonna try the Dark Sword Oslo on it. Ooh, shiny. Look at the shiny. Uh, excuse me, Eddie, Eddie, what? What did you just say to me? So these synthetic zombie heads will definitely murder an improperly fitted sword or a poorly tempered blade while being perfectly appropriate for testing. In historical battle, if your sword fell apart or was otherwise substantially damaged from hitting an opponent's head, you've got a problem. Here it glanced off and hit the stand and the metal ratchet, which of course is harder on the sword, even when using a shield, you can't always prevent contact with an opponent's blade. And yeah, still doing pretty well. I don't even know what this is anymore. It could be a clicker or something. That works. So much fun clean up afterwards. Sorry, no decapitation. There just isn't enough head left. 
so this is not the final review yet and my opinion may be subject to change but I can say that my impression so far has been quite positive. Zero problems, it seems quite well made, well balanced, accurate weight and all of that looks good. So unless some unexpected failure happens, I will be able to recommend this sword. Again, this applies to the most recent version of the Oslo. Not bad. Not bad at all. And I was frankly kind of half-assing the swings because it's getting late and I want to get out of here. So I was getting a little impatient but still works just fine. If you haven't seen it before, I've got an Amazon store where I list certain things that I personally recommend, like swords, knives, video and audio gear, tools, etc. And I'll keep adding new stuff and comments. The link is down below.